I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. Well, it's almost the fall holiday season. Even though it's a few months away, you really need to get prepared. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to give you some suggested projects that you may want to look into doing for the holiday season for your home. And all of the links for all of these tutorials are going to be listed below your YouTube screen. So when you're done watching this video, go ahead and scan all of those links and see and check them out, the ones you think you're interested in. Now this first little one we're looking at is you're thinking, well, what is this? It's a fall garland. And this has just little strips of fabric. I think they're two and a half inch wide by maybe four inches. I don't really remember what they were. And I got some little wooden beads. Now, the wooden beads and the twine were bought at Walmart. The beads came in a great big container, a variety of sizes and colors. And I just strung them on. And what I did with this was down the center of my dining room table, I had this kind of meandering around candles and vases and things like that that I had sitting on the table and it really helped to kind of make it look like a fall holiday. This is so simple. Use your leftover scraps. No sewing in this particular project. Now let's look at some more. Whenever I need to make a quick hostess gift or I want to just redecorate my kitchen really fast is I start with kitchen towels. So when you go to, let's say, your family potluck or whatever you're going to for that holiday season, you could take a little hostess gift, a, a towel. So this was just a plain kitchen towel I bought at Walmart. I took leftover scraps from previous projects and stitched them on. This probably was maybe 15 minutes at the most, so a really quick project. Another way to help bring in that fall season and give that warm, cozy feeling is potholders. This is a very well-known quilt block called a maple leaf pattern. And so it's perfect for the fall season. And I've put this little loop on the potholder so you can hang this in your kitchen. And again, it makes a great hostess gift if you're going to someone else's home for your Thanksgiving dinner. And this one is really easy. It's only four pieces of fabric stitched together. And again, it has this little hanging loop on it. This is my favorite style of oven mitt because it's so easy to make and it just easily fits a variety of hand sizes. You just slip your hand in. You don't need to worry about making a special little section for your thumb. And these are just really nice. This is a mason jar quilt block. And then this just has some leftover scrap fabric from uh, other projects. I put little squares up here in the corner and then this is what it looks like on the back. Like I said, I just use leftover fabrics for my pot holders. Another type of oven mitt, which I really like. My, these are my husband's, they're really large. They're way too big for me. And he has very large hands. He's the cook in the family. I don't know the first thing about cooking. Well, I know how to scramble eggs, but anyway, I digress. So these are really, really nice. You can either buy a pattern, take an old uh, oven mitt and trace around it. And so you can put a little decorative piece up here at the top. These are a lot of fun to make also. And like I said, you don't need a lot of fabric for these. This is a round placemat. You can also make these to put under your pots that you're going to set on the, on the table if you don't want to burn your table. But I've got the same fabric on the back as on the front, but you could put different fabric on the back and have a two-sided placemat. So this is real easy. It's just a circle with a little bit of cotton batting in the inside. Now here's a rectangular placemat. This has a pocket and you can put a napkin in it and your utensils. And this napkin is really, really easy to make, doesn't take much time. So you can select fabrics to coordinate 
with each other so that it looks really nice on your dining table. Here's one of my favorites. It has this real kind of mountain, country, forest feel to it. And I just use little squares all the way around all of the edges. It was just leftover fabric. I cut into small squares and then I just have plain fabric on the back. And this fabric here, I was just in Walmart the other day and they still had it. So this is where I got this fabric. So if you're interested in making this and using this fabric, check out your local Walmart. Not all Walmart, Walmarts carry fabric but maybe yours does and look to see if yours still has it. This is one of my, probably my the most favorite placemat I've ever made. And it's a pumpkin, a, a loose kind of shape of a pumpkin with a little stem and another little leaf that comes out of the top of the pumpkin and little patches of fabric over here. I left this empty up here. It's just got a plain piece of fabric and one of my viewers actually did this placemat. She sent me a picture and she had machine embroidered, I think, Happy Thanksgiving. I don't remember what it said, but I thought, what a cool idea. So if you have an embroidery machine, you could embroidery something, maybe gobble gobble or Happy Thanksgiving or pumpkin patch, whatever you want to say. Now here's one that came out of a jelly roll which are two and a half inch wide strips that are pre-cut. You usually get 20 or 22 strips in a pack. You just stitch them together, bind your edges, and you have this really, really pretty placemat. And so let's take a look at the matching table runner to this. So here is the table runner version. Now I used about two jelly rolls, I would say, for this table runner, but I just love it. It's got all of the fall colors in it. It's really, really easy to do. I, you'll love the little technique I use for putting all these strips together and makes your table runner come out nice and straight. It does have binding on the edges, and I do have lots of tutorials on how to do binding. So let's take a look at some more table runners. This is one of my favorite ones. The fabric has metallic in it, so there's a lot of little gold flecks in it. So again, this is just strips stitched together. You can make your strips any width or length that you like. So let's take a look at some more. This is a table runner that really is not a beginner's project, but I just wanted to show it to you. So if some of you are at least intermediate level or beyond and you've done some quilting, you're probably going to want to try this one. There's three different quilt blocks here, a maple leaf, a pumpkin, and an acorn block. So this is a series of videos that you would watch. Each of the blocks is a separate video. And then the last video, I show you how to stitch it all together. This is one of my most popular table runner tutorials that I have. And it's just plain fabric. It's kind of a burnt orange with burlap strip stitched down the center with, um, I think it's about maybe two inch wide ribbon on top of that. This is a really easy one to stitch together. Now this is not one of those that you can wash. You would have to spot clean anything you get on it because the burlap you cannot wash, but I just love this one on my table. It looks great. This is a little decorative pumpkin pillow. And I show you how to draw the little pumpkin shape, or you can freehand draw your own. It's got a little stem up here and some felt leaves. So you can stitch squares together, or you can use one big solid piece of fabric. It's really up to you, but I just love this little pillow. This one is really easy. This is made out of felt. I cut out the letters, freehand drew the letters myself, cut out some little maple uh, leaf shapes and a little acorn shape. And there's very little stitching. There's just a stitch all the way around with some polyfill stuffing in it. This is a great scrap buster project. It's a rag wreath and it's just, I think maybe two inch wide strips of fabric and you buy the little wire rings at the dollar stores, family dollar, dollar general, and you just tie them in little knots 
all the way around. So again, go through your scrap pile and you may just have enough for one of these ragries. This is a quilt that's made out of panel fabric. And what I mean by panel fabric, you see this scarecrow piece right here? This is one solid piece of fabric. And then a border is added on after that. So I added this yellow border and then I took scrap fabric and cut out different uh, widths of fabric and stitched it around the edges. Now this is one of many fall panel fabric quilts that I have, so make sure you check these out. This type of quilt is a great way to get started in quilting if you are a beginner. Here are some aprons. Now this is just a little half apron. It has pockets on it with gathered uh, fabric up at the top with a, a waistband put around it that actually is your waist tie. This is a beginner's project, so this is not a difficult apron to make. This is panel fabric. This whole apron is one piece of fabric. You cut around the edges to cut it out of the fabric. It even gives you fabric to make the neck uh, band and then your waist ties. A really, really easy project to do. And another thing is, if you have an embroidery machine, you can even embroider something up here at the top, maybe gobble gobble or happy Thanksgiving or blessings, whatever you want to say. So aprons is another great beginner project. I hope you enjoyed looking at all these projects. They're really a lot of fun. There's so much to choose from. And this is just a few of many tutorials that I have. So make sure you check below the YouTube screen for all of those video links. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is Scotty and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing.